the media effects and processes paradigm. Introduction Hello friends, today we are going to discuss the media effects and processes paradigm. This lecture is a part of your paper, Communication Research. From our grandmothers who warned us not to watch the television set from too close when we were little children because it would harm our eyes, to the Central Board of Film Certification, CBFC, the government body whose mission it is to ensure healthy entertainment, recreation and education to the public. CBFC, the effect of media on audiences has been of concerns to multiple authorities in society. Debates on the effect of media, especially the negative effects, arise quite regularly when young children endanger themselves by recreating stunts that have been viewed on television or online. And when films are considered to be too violent for general audiences, among other instances. We will learn about media effects, which are a central preoccupation of both media practitioners and researchers. What do we mean when we say that the media have an effect? Potter 2011 defines a mass media effect in the following manner. A mass media effect is a change in an outcome within a person or social entity that is due to mass media, influence following exposure to a mass media message or a series of messages. When you see a commercial encouraging you to vote and you decide to vote and eventually post your selfie with the ink on your index finger on the social media, we can see an example of the media having an effect on your behaviour. Why are media effects important to us as media practitioners and researchers? As per 2000 notes, the study of media effects is the study of how to control, enhance or mitigate the impact of the mass media on individuals and society. In other words, this type of research explores the effect of that media have on audiences so that negative effects can be reduced and positive effects enhanced. Media effects research has focused on violence, children's use of media, learning from media and so on. From the earliest days of media research in the 20th century, media effects research attracted researchers such as Paul Lazarfield and Carl Hovland who used scientific methods such as surveys and experiments to collect empirical data on how audiences responded to media messages and these research studies were actively supported by the American government, private trusts and the media industry because of their interest in persuasion and propaganda. Barron and Davies, 2014. Cooper, Potter and Dupin, 1994, found that about 25% of publications in the main international communications research journals in the 25-year-old period from 1965 to 1989 focused on media effects. From this, we can see how the media effects and processes paradigm can be considered to occupy such an important position in communications research. Learning Outcomes We will familiarize ourselves with the media effects and processes paradigm of research. We will learn about effects and processes and how they are modelled. In the last section, we also consider some of the criticisms of this paradigm. Effects and processes Researchers have been studying cognitive, attitudinal, belief-related, affective, physiological and behavioural effects of the media, Potter 2011. Some media researchers 
prefer to use the term media processes rather than media effects for greater accuracy since the term effect suggests casualty originating in the media and excludes complex multi-stage processes. Potter 2001 identifies four dimensions of media effects that is timing, type, direction and intentionality. We will explore them one by one. Timing When does the effect occur? Does the effect take place immediately due to a single exposure, short term, or does it take place as a result of many exposures to the media over the long term? Number 2 Type The five main types of effects are cognitive, attitudinal, emotional, physiological and behavioral effects. Cognitive effects are effects related to knowing and gaining knowledge such as learning about the election results via the social media. Short-term cognitive effects include short-term learning, intensive learning and extensive learning. In intensive learning, additional information is added to topics on which there is already some information, whereas extensive learning adds information on new topics. Long-term cognitive effects include learning agendas, hypermnesia and generalization. Learning agendas arise from the media's agenda setting function. That is, the media orient audiences to the importance of issues so that when some issues are not given importance in the media, audiences are less likely to think that they are important issues. We can see this in the limited coverage given to issues of gender, inequality and the environment in our media and the corresponding lack of interest in these topics compared to celebrity and sports news. Hyperamnesia occurs when we gain knowledge about new topics. The information has no existing knowledge structure to be added to, but if there are further exposures, then all the knowledge gained comes back to us. Generalization occurs when individuals put information together and conclude a bigger picture which may or may not be wholly accurate. Attitudinal effects are effects related to opinions, beliefs and values such as our views on climate change which change when we view an in-depth documentary on the subject. Short-term attitudinal effects include opinion creation, opinion change, inoculation and reinforcement. Just like a medical inoculation makes a person resistant to a disease, inoculation is a media effect where audience members can become resistant to the idea which is presented to them as being incorrect or otherwise worth resisting. So for instance, if a political party preempts its competitors by revealing their arguments and refuting them ahead of time when audiences actually hear the arguments they are already inoculated against them and will be resistant to them. The reinforcement effect works by reinforcing an existing opinion so that it does not change. Long term attitudinal effects include the sleeper effect and socialization. The sleeper effect is seen when an individual is exposed to information that she may not initially agree with or accept, but may recall some parts of it at a later stage. Socialization is learning about the society. Ours is a lifelong process and individuals are socialized into existing social values regarding materialism, nutrition, beauty and instant gratification. Emotional effects are related to feelings such as joy we feel when our favorite sports team wins a match. Short-term emotional effects are temporary reactions that dissipate after some time. Long-term emotional effects include stunted emotional development. Since individuals are not participating in interactions with other individuals when they are consuming media content and desensitization where individuals are no longer shocked by a certain type of content. 
Physiological effects are effects related to our automatic bodily processes which are not under our conscious control such as perspiration, heart rate and so on. So, for instance, when we listen to relaxing instrumental music, we feel calm and our heart rate slows down. Whereas, when we listen to heavy metal music, we can feel our hearts pounding. Short-term physiological effects are temporary fight-or-fight -fight reactions where the body responds to media stimuli automatically. For instance, through the release of adrenaline. For instance, through the release of adrenaline. Long-term physiological effects include shifts in brain activity and attention deficits. Behavioral effects are effects on our actions such as sharing a post about blood donation requirements on a social media page. Imitation is a short-term behavioral effect where individuals repeat a behavior they have just seen in the media. Activation is another short-term behavioral effect. Here even though a behavior is not shown, it is suggested that and it triggers the behavior in the individual. Long-term behavioral effects include learned helplessness, displacement, the narcotizing effect and disinhibition. Learned helplessness arises because media consumption requires watching, listening and not actively responding. Over a period of time, individuals are less able to actively respond. Media consumption also displaces other activities from an individual's schedule. You will find that social media take up a lot of your time, leaving you with less time for the other activities. Media use is habit forming, like narcotics. Thus, the narcotizing effect of media leads to increase in media use. This inhibition is a media effect where long term exposure to media reduces inhibitions towards violence or other socially negative behaviors. Potter and Riddle, 2007, found that cognitive, behavioral, and attitudinal effects were the most popularly researched type of effects. Number 2. Direction The direction of an effect can be positive or negative, that is pro or antisocial or in a constructive or destructive direction. Thus watching a film on women's education and deciding to contribute to the cause in some way would be a positive effect, while viewing the opposite gender in a stereotypical fashion would be a negative effect. Number 3. Intentionality Does the effect take place because of our intentions? For instance, when we want to learn something from the news or does the effect take place unintentionally, such as information that we pick up by the way? With an understanding of the dimensions of media effects, we examine how media effects are modelled. That is how media effects occur do. We know that for media effects to occur, we need audience members to receive exposure to media content. But what are the characteristics of media content and what are the characteristics of media audiences that we need to bear in mind in order to explain how an effect occurs? We examine four models of media effects in the next section in order to answer this question. Four models of media effects. PERS 2000 identifies four models of media effects, direct effects, conditional effects, cumulative effects and cognitive transactional effects. We examine them further. Number one, direct effects model. 
This model views the media as having direct and immediate effect due to the type of media content. Automatic responses are very much a part of this model. This model does not account for any mental processing that audience members might be able to do in order to counteract the effect of the content. Therefore, this model does not account for person-to-person -person variations in the effect. Thus, if one person buys one product but another does not, this model will not be able to account for such an effect. This model gives importance to media content. Therefore, structural features of the content such as realism make the content more powerful. Number 2. Conditional Effects Model This model includes the audience members and their ability to be selective in their responses. Thus, the effect is conditional depending on the audience member. Individual differences and group membership or relationship plays an important role in the effects that the media have on individuals. Barron and Davies, 2014. Social categories such as demographic indicators, social relationships such as group viewing with family or friends and individual differences such as personality traits, including neuroticism, psychoticism, need for cognition and sensation seeking. Attitudes and moods play an important role in this model. Number 3. Cumulative Effects Model The ubiquitous and pervasive presence of media messages makes it impossible for everyone to avoid exposure and over a period of time, the media have a cumulative effect on how reality is constructed. The role of news channels in agenda setting can be understood through this model, which is similar to the direct effects model in its emphasis on media content rather than the audience members. Cognitive Transactional Effects Model This model draws from cognitive psychology and emphasizes knowledge structures called schema which organize and link information. It allows for both automatic processing which is not within individual's control as well as controlled processing which is within individual's control. Thus, this model includes both media content as well as the audience. Media content is seen to play a priming role that prepares individuals to access some schema over others. Audience members, on the other hand, are also in a position to respond to media content based on their individual abilities to process this media content. Now that we understand that media effects occur due to an interaction between the media content characteristics and the audience member characteristics, we explore some theories of media effect in the next section. Thus far in this module, we have only examined media effects on individuals. However, the media also have effects on institutions such as the family, politics, religion, sports and society. Potter 2001 especially see the effect on politics, where election spending on the media has increased astronomically. The phenomenon of paid news, where news organizations accept payments in exchange for carrying news items that are favorable to specific candidates. Almost all major religions now have media channels so that their believers can engage with the religion through media use. The proliferation of media has had an effect on sports. The Indian Premier League, IPL, is one such example. The effect of media coverage given to the Olympics and the Indian women medal winners like PV Sindhu and Sakshi Malik is another example. Early radio and television broadcasting in India 
played an important role in creating the Indian nation in the imagination of their consumers through their programming, which emphasized pan-Indian themes. In later lessons, we will examine, explore some of the well-known theories of media effects that focus on audiences such as the uses and gratifications approach, cultivation theory, knowledge gap theory and theories which examine media content such as framing and agenda setting. Criticisms this approach, which is considered to be the dominant paradigm in communication research, has been criticized for being so. Barron and Davies, 2014. Media effects research has also been criticized because it follows an administrative rather than a critical orientation. <music> Gitlin, 1978, cited in Perth, 2000 giving priority to findings that might support the status quo without being critical of the structures within which the media industries operate. Media effect sizes are also considered to be smaller compared to the effect of other influences such as the family and social relationships on an individual. Purse 2000. However, even if media effect sizes are small, if our theories explain them in a consistent fashion, now this is a valuable insight into human cognitive, attitudinal and behavioral processes. Summary Now let us summarize what we discussed in the module. We first learned about the media effects and processes paradigm of research. We learned that a mass media effect is a change in an outcome within a person or social entity that is due to mass media influence following exposure to a mass media message or series of messages. Potter 2011, page 903. We discovered that media effects have four dimensions that is timing, type, direction and intentionality and that the five main types of effects are cognitive, attitudinal, emotional, physiological and behavioral. We examined four models of media effects direct effects, conditional effects, cumulative effects, and cognitive transactional effects, which laid differing emphasis on media content and audience members. Finally, we also considered some of the criticisms of this paradigm. Do attempt the questions in the self-evaluate quadrant. For further reading suggestions, please do the third quadrant. Thank you.